I mean, we'd spent a couple of days in Houston. We'd come home. And, and by the way, my children grew up in my airboat. We, 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 we hunt alligators in the marsh at night, miles from anyone. So when that airboat leaves, they, they're mad at me if they're not in it. And, but I had been leaving without them. They were wanting to go. I'd come back. It was a late evening, and the waters were rising in that area in Northwest Forest where Mr. LeBee lives. And that's, we know that area really well. So I wanted my kids to experience the fruit of love. In other words, we were doing what was best for others without regard for ourselves. But the fruit of love with those people loving us, being so grateful for help, I just I wanted them to experience that. So I had to sneak in. I got my kids in my boat, and law enforcement would have never let me go in there with my kids. I've been spanked a few times for it already, but <laughs> we're, right, we're idling around in this neighborhood, and the water's already really high, and it's rising. And so I'm thinking, nobody's left here. I mean, if anybody's left in this neighborhood, it's the most hard-headed guy in the whole neighborhood. And the kids start hollering and pointing. There there he is. You know, this whole guy comes walking out with his cap on. He's got his wife up in the attic. He's got his cats up in the attic. And he's still not planning on leaving. So, I, But I'm thinking, you're not leaving. I mean, you're not staying. You're leaving with us. And I'm trying to figure out how to get that done. So that's the conversation we had. But turns out he, he's not only an old Marine. He spent most of his life as a mercenary. He's a real-life Rambo. He lived in that home for the last 16 years. Most of his neighbors said it, he had never spoke a word. He'd seen so much that, so much selfishness that he just huddled up, you know. And um, he's talking to his neighbors now. He's he's the most hard-headed, but probably the most loving man in that whole neighborhood. He's yeah, he's become a friend of ours. He probably calls me every week. So I take it you're gonna you're gonna go back into that. Is it that neighborhood you're going back into? Yeah, we're going to start. We started in Houston in the rescue, so we're going to start back at South Post Oak in uh, 610. There was a couple of families there. We got out about 1 o'clock in the morning. reminded me of my own family. We haven't seen them since. I hope they're still there. We want to go see them. We're going to go to uh, Beltway and Tidwell. That was where we spent day two. And then day three, we came back to Beaumont and found Mr. LeVee. We're going there. And uh, there's a little boy that we found in Beaumont with his mom. He had tied a – nobody could see him. They were so far back in the woods. He had taken a broomstick and tied his shirt around it. And he was waving it. And um, I didn't see it. The guy with me, Andrew, spotted a flash and said, somebody's in there. I said, man, no way. But he was sure. So we went and we found that little boy with that broomstick and his mom and his daughter in there. I want to go meet that little courageous little boy. So we just want to go see a couple of these people under different circumstances, give them a shield of strength, love them and thank them for loving us, encourage them. Uh, it's going to be an emotional ride, but we're looking forward to it.